Um, so welcome everyone. Um, we, this session is Ethnomusicology Through Technology. Try not to say that too fast. Um, by Nisha Fig. Um, I'll give a quick summary if you haven't already read Nisha's um, bio. Nisha has taught in kindergartens, schools and universities and she completed a Masters of Education in 2000. As well as working at Cultural Infusion, she teaches at Alfington Primary School and is passionate about sharing music from all over the world with her students. Nisha spent four years developing, importing and distributing multicultural resources to schools and presenting at Australian music conferences as the director of the company World Beat Learning. Rather than listening to me though, I'm going to hand you over to Nisha and she can share her experiences and her knowledge. So Nisha, over to you. Thank you. Hi everyone and welcome. Yeah, I, um, I've always had a passion for um, sharing diverse uh, music around the world with students and I know that increasingly it's become not just an interest um, for music teachers, but it's an expectation now um, under the um, intercultural understanding component of our curriculum. Uh, so I wanted to just share some ideas around um, a really great product that I've been working with um, as part of my work at Cultural Infusion called Sound Infusion, which I'll share, but also how we use blended learning in the classroom today. Um, so just a few ideas to make things fairly easy. But before I go further, I'd just like to um, also acknowledge um, some of the traditional well, the traditional owners of the land upon um, which I'm presenting. So in the spirit of reconciliation, cultural infusion acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to the land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples today. Okay, so I will keep going. Now, what I would like to actually get you to do at the very beginning, if you wouldn't mind, before I talk about Cultural Infusion, which is the company um, that developed the product that I'm sharing with you today, um, as well as some of the ideas, I'd, I'd be really interested to find out if you have any favourite um, ways that you, um, just activities that you include in your classrooms to ensure there's some diversity, of, uh, of music taught in your classroom. If anyone's got favorite things that they do, just one or two sentences, it could be just, or oh, we always have this incursion for um, Harmony Day, or I like to teach this song for Harmony Day, or um, we have a high component of people from this culture in our school and I've learned these songs, anything at all. Um, I'd be really interested to check the chat a little bit later and share some of those experiences because it's always really interesting. Um, so cultural infusion, where I work two days a week when I'm not teaching, um, they were founded around 2002 with a view of taking a range of culturally diverse presenters into schools. Um, they are building the intercultural capability understanding core value of the curriculum and the key competency of global citizenship. In 2019, cultural infusion passed the milestone of the six millionth student experiencing a cultural infusion incursion. And I'm sure that um, that fits very well with the Music Nourish Life uh, theme of our conference today. If you can imagine six million students around Australia over the life of the company, um, experiencing everything from Indonesian gamelan music to West African dancing and drumming to um, Italian folk songs, you name it. Um, there are so many wonderful presenters um, that are employed by Cultural Infusion and they perform all around Australia. So it's a really impressive company and I'm very proud to be working as part of this company. I'm going to start off today by having a look at Sound Infusion with everybody. Um, so it has a virtual studio of culturally diverse music from around the world. It has over 4,000 samples of different instrument sounds from 300 instruments from 100 countries and 50 lesson plans from year one to year 10 that, that teachers can use with these wonderful sounds. So it's a unique 
online studio that brings together sounds from all over the world. And again, that fits well with our conference um, music nourish life theme. Um, it was developed to foster harmonious cultural understanding. So the objectives for today for my presentation are to demonstrate intercultural aspects of sound infusion, to enable a live session for each of you to try sound infusion. And I'll explain how to do that a little bit later on and to share some blended learning ideas for the classroom featuring African music and dance. Um, of course, that's one of just one continent of um, all the continents that are represented on um, the Sound Infusion platform. But um, I've got some particularly fun activities that I've been using this year with, with the African music and dance culture. Sound Infusion is the winner of the 2013 United Nations Alliance of Civilizations Intercultural Innovation Award. It won um, another award in 2014. In a nutshell, as I was saying before, it's an interactive music program that enables students to combine sounds of instruments from many cultures. It includes 4,000 tracks, as I was saying before, of 300 different instruments from 100 countries and lesson plans. They are linked to the Australian curriculum and the International Baccalaureate. Here's a video that just gives you a little, little snapshot of Sound Infusion before I show you a little bit more of it on the platform itself. From the drums of Africa. To the bazookas of Greece. Amazing flutes, zithers and gongs from China. Do's in Australia. With Sound Infusion, students can create music and authentic sounds from around the globe. Trying to get onto my next slide here. Sorry, everyone, for the delay. A couple of mouse problems. Okay, I'll come out of there and doesn't want to go into the next slide. Next. Right. <laughs> I'll stop the share and then move on to the next slide that way. I think that's probably the quickest thing to do. Sorry about the delay there. Before I go on to do that, though, I'm just going to check in the chat and see what people have said about sharing activities. It's always really interesting to see what we're all doing in the classroom and conferences are such a great opportunity to share ideas. Um, I don't know about you, but I've been to some amazing presentations this morning and really enjoyed seeing all sorts of perspectives on music education. So a unit on Asian music, fantastic. And a sing around the world unit, well done. African drumming and singing games, great. You'll love this then. <laughs> Maybe you will have done the same song I'm going to do today. Great. Choirs, lots of South African songs and folk songs. Yeah, and folk, folk music for classroom percussion is fantastic. I agree. Other cultures and countries, that's good. Chinese music ensemble, how fantastic. At the Sydney Conservatorium and an around the world unit. So lots and lots going on in the classrooms. An annual gamelan event would have been amazing. And samba, wow, fantastic. You must be very coordinated. 
<laughs> okay, I shall just now attempt to go on to the next page of what I was going to show you in my presentation, um, which just was not behaving itself just then. Let's go on there and have a look. Okay, and sharing again. And going on to where we were up to. So yeah, I was just at a point where um, prior to giving you all the opportunity of having a look at Sound Infusion yourself today, I wanted to um, do a little tour with me showing you a few things that I've been enjoying using on Sound Infusion and just, just generally what, what it looks like. And then you could go in and have a look yourselves today. Um, so I'll first start off by looking at um, classifications of um, the different, sorry, it's done that again. No, we are, we're having a little bit of trouble with that today. I'll go in and um, try that again. No. Okay, well, I won't share it as a presentation. I'll just share my screen there. Um, so we're going to start off by looking at some classifications. Um, because in sound infusion, rather than using um, the common classifications of wind, percussion, etc., cetera, um, we use membranophone, idiophone, aerophone, and portophone. And there are some definitions there that people might not be aware of. So I'll just show you a little bit about that first. Then I'd like to show you a lesson plan about a musical treasure hunt that I've been using with you three and four that comes from sound infusion. And we'll look at um, how that treasure hunt works using sounds from, and I actually did this in term three with my year fours. We found instruments from Bolivia, Peru, Kazakhstan, China, and Israel, and made them into a piece of music. Um, I'll share an anecdote, anecdote about Yom Kippur with you, and also just have a look at um, the map and studio arranging. So I'm going to... Sorry, Nisha, are you intending to share the screen now or in a little while? Ah, um, I'm going to go in and share Sound Infusion now with you. So, yeah, thank you for letting me know what you can see. So I'm going to go in now and uh, go to the website Sound Infusion and just share a few things with you before we look at um, you being able to go in and have a go at it yourselves today. So I'm just going to have that ready to go. one that I prepared earlier and I'm already logged in so that should display for you all right can everybody see what what says sound infusion operation guide can people see that okay can I just have yep that's good yeah Beautiful, okay. So um, yeah, I'm going straight to where it says how to use this little little spot here, because that's a spot where if you wanted to find out how to use anything and it's not intuitively just happening for you, you can go there. Um, there's information about the dashboard of the studio or the dashboard when you start, um, and what the sidebar tells you about the studio itself. And this is really, I really think this is quite nifty. You just hover over each of the little icons with the little white box around it. And it tells you a little bit about it there. So if you're in the studio itself and it's you're not working out what the things are for, you can come here and um, it'll tell you. And then going down to just underneath where the map is, um, this is what I was talking about with the instrument classifications. So some people might not be aware of these classifications. And this is where I think I used the, the term ethnomusicological or ethnomusicology to describe sound infusion because the detail that you get with the descriptions about what the instruments, how they make their sound, also where their sound comes from and the link to the map, it's just, it's very, it's quite deep um, compared to other uh, music technology on the market. So it's just a really great way to come in and see some re really good detail about instruments from around the world. So this one here, for instance, is a membranophone and it tells you exactly what that means. There are four types of membranophones that are described. And then you have your descriptions of an, what an idiophone is, an aerophone, an electrophone, 
and a quarter phone. So they're all described there. So I'm going to then go to the lesson plans here. And we're going to have a bit of a look at one that's a treasure hunt. And this was really lots of fun with year four at the end of a lockdown term. They had a great deal of fun and we had a really interesting student an anecdote that I will share a little bit later. Um, let's come down to middle primary school years treasure hunt. So they're just displayed as little tiles here and you just scroll down to whichever title appeals. And when you open, you'll see straight away that there are links to lesson uh, curriculum guides. So we have the Victoria, Australia and the International Baccalaureate and where you the, the numbers associated or the page numbers and what the descriptions are. And then very quickly, you can just have a look at the objective and decide if that's something that suits what your curriculum is or not and the teacher resources required. Most of the time, it's just computers and, um, and a display screen. It's very simple. So for this one, I'm going to scroll down to number four because we weren't in the classroom doing this. We were online. We went straight to looking at the world map, which we'll do in a minute together, and asking groups to find one instrument from two neighbouring countries, two string instruments, two instruments they'd never heard of and an instrument that looked interesting. So we'll remember that when we're going on a treasure hunt, one instrument from neighboring countries, two string instruments, two instruments they'd never heard of and an instrument that looked interesting. Okay, and now going back to our Sound infusion, having trouble finding it because it's underneath the bar that you share. If anyone's got a, a quick fix for this, let me know. Okay, it's probably easiest if I do a new share again. I'll come back to my sound infusion once I've got it organized for everybody. And we'll share the map where we start our little treasure hunt. This is quite a fun one. So here's our map on Sound Infusion. And as you can see, all of these instruments um, are displayed in the approximate geographical location of where they come from. Uh, so we'll zoom in a little bit. And when I was doing this treasure hunt in term three, we found that we wanted to start in, I had a few students just doing this with me and they wanted to start in Bolivia. So we clicked on this one and had a look at the Maceno, which is a type of flute from Bolivia. Um, there's information about it there and we can hear what it sounds like. That's a beautiful sound. So we wrote down the country and the instrument ready for going into the studio and making an arrangement. We also went to Peru, which is our neighboring country next door and looked at the Quinacho. And when you play that one, it has a lovely sound as well. So we wrote down those details and then we zoomed out and went to a different country, different, different couple of countries where we were looking for our two string instruments. So we're just navigating our way to where that was. And you should be able to see over here in Kazakhstan, we have something that looks like a string instrument. We had to listen to that, the Dombra. So we 
have done Kazakhstan and Dombra for finding that in the studio a little bit later on our treasure hunt. And then we went over to China where we found this instrument, the Gaohu, which is um, the larger version of the Ohu, Erhu. So they were our neighboring countries of instruments, our two string instruments. We're looking for some unusual instruments. We're just going to skip to the one that they'd never heard of for the purposes of our webinar today. And the one that one of the girls asked to see was this one here, which unfortunately doesn't have a recording, but it's got the information about it. Shofar is traditionally used in Jewish religious ceremonies, such as signaling the end of Yom Kippur. Um, and when she mentioned that one that she'd never heard of, another girl in the class um, asked to talk and said, yesterday I was playing that instrument and I play it every year because I'm Jewish. And in our household, we play that all the time. So now this is something that I'm finding happens repeatedly whatever activity I'm doing with sound infusion is you find out about students and their cultural heritage and their background. And it's fascinating to see their pride or sometimes they don't have pride in it. Sometimes it happens accidentally and they just want to skip over it because it's not something they focus on at school a lot. But quite often you will find students who are just very keen to share about instruments and music from their culture. So this is a great thing about sound infusion. Okay, so I'm going to now attempt to go back to my um, PowerPoint, which was misbehaving. We'll see how that goes. I'll stop sharing that for now. Bring up my PowerPoint. Okay, I'm going to see if I can share that with you now. And we've seen that video and we're going now to, we've been through our little treasure hunt together. Um, actually, I did want to show you a little bit of um, a studio arrangement, but now that we've gone past that, I will leave that out for now because I'm more keen for you to try out this studio yourself. Um, no, actually, I think it is good if we go to the studio, my apologies, because then you'll be more comfortable finding it. So studio. I will have ready to go and then you can have your little trial. Okay. So going to my little trial of the studio now. So when we've had our treasure hunt, um, we press the studio button. There's a little thing that says studio and we get to this, which is where you do your main work um, in sound infusion. There are, there's a library with lots and lots of different sounds here. Um, and as you go around and hover over these icons, you'll see that it tells you what they do. One of my favorites um, is when you get to this one, it says contributors. If you click on that, um, you can invite students into a room to collaborate and you can have a, a number of different little rooms on Sound Infusion where you have groups of students always with you as one of the people in the room. Um, able to work on a uh, collaborate and work on a um, an arrangement together so that's a wonderful feature there so we're going to go straight to the library here though and just give you an example of if you if we were starting off our little treasure hunt um, composition we would go down to Bolivia searching by country and we were playing just one instrument, but as you can see, there's a lot of different instruments there. Here's one that we were playing. And the amazing thing is each of these samples is um, selected and engineered so that it's in a similar sort of key. I mean, you can't always say it's major or minor in um, 
diverse music from around the world, but it's around a certain set of notes and they all sort of go together if you so it's pretty amazing. That's a couple of instruments from Bolivia. And then to arrange, you simply click on the sample and drag it into the studio area in the middle. And as soon as you've dragged it in, you'll see that there's a number of functions for each track. You've got some volume controls, you can remove it. Um, there's effects that you can apply, you can change the color of it, all those sorts of things. And then, yeah, so you drag them in. I've actually got an arrangement that I did already of our treasure hunt. So this is um, what we came up with for this. For our instruments from Bolivia, Peru, Kazakhstan and China, we use these ones. <laughs> treasure hunt um, arrangement that we came up with last or well, a couple of weeks ago. Um, yeah, so um, that is just a little guided tour of Sound Infusion. What I would like to do now is share with you the website and Reza Moyeni, who is actually the creator of Sound Infusion, is standing by here to help people have a free trial, which is quite an amazing thing to be able to offer people. Um, so I'll just, again, share my screen. And this time um, I will have the, it's doing it again. It's not, it's not going forward. There it is. Um, if you could copy and paste the link from the chat, which I'll, I'll put this in the chat right now for you. And um, what you do when you get to the website is there'll be a little floating um, bit of text that's in capitals that says click on try now for free and then you can um, click on there and it'll be simple and Reza will make sure that you can get on please let me know if you can't in the chat um, and then you can have just 10 minutes to browse the website or create a short arrangement to share um, and after that 10 minutes I'll um, get you to share experiences in the chat and by invitation and we'll we'll see how you went with uh, with trying out sound infusion it's quite exciting if I can actually select the text, my PowerPoint is really not treating me well today. Okay, I'm going to type it into the text for you and I will do that right now. So coming to the chat. So if people could Put that into their browser www.soundinfusion.com.au and then click on try now for free and i'd like you to have a have a go at sound infusion for 10 minutes and come back and i'll be here the whole time i'll put the timer on just to keep track of great things. thank you that's really good thank you Ah, uh, thanks, Alex. Is that a better link, Ta? Yes, it's just a hyperlink, so that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. Alex is also from Cultural Infusion. So Reza is saying you can register for free and then he will upgrade your account to full access for a month.
this will be the bit of the recording that people can fast forward for 10 minutes. <laughs> Yes, hopefully they'll um, do likewise when they're listening to the recording and try it out. Yeah, go to the website oh, and try it although, out. Yeah. Actually, that, now that's a question. For yeah. those that are listening to this after the event mm. and in the ensuing six months, are they still going to be able to do that registering for free? Um, Res is here right now. So I, it shouldn't matter how you connect. You should, it's, it's a website, Rachel. So if you put in the, if you click on the link, it should come up. I hope that helps. Um, so Reza, could you answer that question? Um, for participants who are watching the video, th are they still able to access Sound Infusion? There is a trial that they can try anytime, isn't there? It's just not full red, full access. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So if you have um, if if you have access to the chat box, so you can save the link. And uh, if you register on the website right after our uh, presentation, I will still upgrade your account to full access. Um, if it didn't happen, if you want to upgrade like tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, we might consider that as a, like a marketing lead or sales lead. So just let me know that or let us know that this is from uh, the presentation by Nisha and then um, I'll do that for free for you. Right, that's okay. But, and the fact that we've recorded that will be helpful because when they're watching the recording later, they won't have access to the chat box. Yeah, they and do so, have that. They do have that. Um, oh, yeah. How to how to get that link from mm, the? That's what I'm thinking. So I'm wondering if I might actually copy the link and put that into the website below the main part and just say for those watching at a later date, use this link. Would that be suitable? Is that okay? That would be great. That would yep. be really good. Yeah, right, I'll, I'll do that now while everybody's having fun on the website. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.
Okay, that should be set there then so that people watching later on can access that. Great, thank you. So how much longer have people got for their tr trial? Um, I thought it was good. They've got minutes. about two minutes left. About yep. two minutes, okay. Yep. Yeah, so if people are still listening, um, if you could try, I know it's hard to have such a short trial, but if you could try in the next couple of minutes to wrap up your little trial and we could have a quick um, chat about what you've seen before we go into the blended learning part of the presentation. Yes, free trials are nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when they're truly free and you don't have to commit anything except having a try. <laughs> that's, um, that's great. So if there's anyone who has managed to extract themselves out of their little trial time and they've got something to share, Oh, that's good. Thanks. Thanks, Neil. I was going to say feedback by the chat, please. We've got one, about a minute to go. Yeah. Play time. A minute to go. <laughs> uh, sorry, Nisha. I have, I'm upgrading the accounts to the full access for a period of a month at least. Uh, so whoever has been upgraded, they will receive an automatic email that their account has been upgraded. You need to log out and re-log in to see the full features. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Reza. Amazing work. Um, yeah. Okay, so is there anyone else who's um, managed to come out of their trial and has some feedback or something that they managed to do? I'm happy to, um, to, to give you access to sharing if you wanted to share something that you created. We could have a look at what uh, what people have done. Just got like maybe two or three minutes, um, and then I need to move on to the next part of the presentation. Okay, that's about the ten minutes. Give yeah. take a few seconds. <laughs> yeah. So I was just saying, if anyone has something to share, quite happy to. Um, to to I've actually changed it now to multiple participants can share. So if anyone um, wants to, just let me know in the shed. Oh, great. So yeah, Neil's got a very short something that he might be able to share. I'd love to see what you've done, Neil. And Lana K. Great. Let's let's see. Um, Neil, could you try and share yours? And then if we've got a minute or two, we could have a listen to Lana Kay as well. It's really interesting to see how people learn in this situation. You're welcome, Michelle. Haven't heard back from Neil yet. Thanks for offering, Lynn. Neil, are you there? Are you able to share something? You should be able to either message or unmute yourself, Neil, I hope. Okay, we can't wait for too long, so I might move on. Lana Kay, I hope I'm saying yep. your name the right way. Can uh, you Lanika. share some? Yeah, hi. Uh, yep, I've shared sound. Here we go. Thank you. And it should play now. Do I need to stop sharing mine? Let's see if yours comes through here. Hopefully it does. I think you'll need to stop sharing yours. Yeah, I've got to stop mine first, so I'll oh, do okay. that now. I'll yeah. do that now and let's see what comes That's up. That's better. Great. Okay, let's, let's see if it works. Just let me know. the play button yep it's the green triangle good yeah did you hear that no no oh really okay well i was having fun <laughs> um did you share did you select the the video option when you shared your zoom 
Oh, who knows anymore? I, <laughs> I'll give it another go, but if you need to move on. Um, um, we, let's, let's, let's give it one more try. If you just Okay, so I've got the desktop. Go okay, well, I'll just share the desktop then. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's me. That's, yeah, go for it. Is Read that it. Neil? Is that yeah. Neil? Okay. That's it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I'm sorry if you if there's other people to share, but I really would like to show you some other things today. So I'm going to now um, come back to sharing my PowerPoint and some things about blended learning. Um, but hopefully that gives you an idea about Sound Infusion. And Reza, you said that they have full access once they log in again until the end of the month. Uh, until the end of next month. Yep. For free. Yep. Yeah, till the end of October. Okay, that is great to know. Thank you. Uh, so I will keep going with my, so the blended learning aspect is what I'm planning to share next. Um, so blended learning is just anything that combines traditional methods of teaching with um, methods that are using technology. Um, so I've got a unit of music um, work that I've been doing with African music and dance using sound infusion software, a Liberian so song called Banua, and video footage of African children making music and some West African dance moves. So I'll see how much of that I can fit in. I'll, I'll try and speed through without stressing people, <laughs> um, but they're all fun things to do. Um, yeah, and um, hopefully you'll enjoy that. So after I had um, explored African sounds on sound infusion as a starting point for this unit, Okay, that's the first step. I would then go on to this step. Now, this is a beautiful song that I've been using in the classroom for a lot of years, and I won't say how many because it's a few too many, but um, absolutely beautiful song from Liberia. Um, it's a game song for groups of six to 30 students, and it, it, it's all around combining singing and the passing of sticks in certain patterns. And there are variants you can do to make it harder, which are things like the leader will change the dynamics or the tempo. And as when I play it to you, you'll hear that you can also sing it as a round, um, which would be a great way to extend as well. So the lyrics are there and the translation is don't cry, pretty little girl. When I do it, um, I am lucky enough to, to work in a school that has lots of trees around, gum trees. And we walk out to the playground and we collect sticks to start with, and it's so much fun. Um, I tend to do this with say kids around year two or year three. Um, and I can't believe their luck that in a music lesson, they're go, walking out into the yard to collect sticks because usually on yard duty teachers are like, no, put that stick down, no, 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 no. So we collect the sticks with great joy and we don't hit each other with them because we know about that. And we come back to the classroom and we sit in a circle and we throw the sticks into the middle of the circle to make a bonfire. And I say, we'll come back to that bonfire and yes, I know you had your very own stick, but this is all around sharing and that stick will come back to you in the circle. It always does. It's like the circle of life. Um, so then we learn to sing this beautiful song um, and the song I'll sing to you um, after I've just explained how the stick passing works. So pretending we have our stick, we learn to point the stick down or just tap it on the floor to start with whenever we're saying banua, so we go on the beat, banua, banua, banua. When we get to yo, stick that we were holding in hand goes to the right at simultaneously with, with this hand, the other hand, the left hand reaching to the left and grabbing neighbor's stick. You can imagine how many times we have to go through this routine before it is learned, but it is. I, it takes about five goes. And when you're teaching the stick passing, like the banua, you're tapping on the beat, the yo, you're passing to the right and reaching for the left simultaneously. When you're teaching this, you say to the students, the rule is, okay, that everyone is allowed to make mistakes, that you hold your hand up if your stick is missing or if you have too many sticks, the game stops, 
we all distribute our sticks, we keep learning. We do this five or six times. And then eventually you have this fantastic game that the kids absolutely love with the stick passing. When it gets to nanny, nanny, ala no, nanny, ala no, nanny, ala no, banua, ala no, ala no. You're waving your stick in the air that whole time, right? So you have the banua, 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 your pass and grab. Banua, 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 your pass and grab. Nanny, this is where you wave for a long time so that everyone can scramble and get ready for the next round. Nanny, ala no, nanny, ala no, nanny, ala no, banua, ala no, ala no. And then it just goes. And so you can imagine when you get faster with that, real challenge. When you get very slow with that, another, as we all know, slow is hard for kids. That's a real challenge. Um, louder, softer, round. This is how you sing it as a round. We'll just listen to a tiny amount of it. see it's quite an amazing little activity it can take four lessons really to do that four lessons with a little bit of extra stuff I'm going to do the extra stuff now for you this is where songs like Banua originate um, so a colleague at Cultural Infusion shared this with me he saw it on um, social media and it's a video that was posted by US-based jazz musician Lionel Lurke born in Benin in West Africa and I was thrilled to share this with my kids at school. And we used our music language and nothing else to describe what was going on. And it was very interesting. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, you can just see how songs like Banua come out of this kind of play. It's amazing. Um, onwards and upwards. Um, so the next little activity I want to share with you is an amazing group from Melbourne called Melbourne Djembe. I would actually hook this up with a cultural infusion incursion of some West African drumming and dance. Um, we have incursions at cultural infusion that come out to schools with this kind of culture. Um, but none of them had pre-recorded videos. So I, I got this one from, um, from YouTube, I think. And since it has become the most fun dance activity that, um, again, my year fours have ever come across. They're gonna do it at a concert at some point when we get an opportunity. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd just like to play this and then show you my dance lesson around it.
so teacher me had to sit down and write down all the steps was the first thing I did because I just had to teach this to the kids. Um, I start, It started out just us watching it as an amazing learning, listening activity. And then I thought, no, we have to learn how to do this and we have to start slow. So we're going to have to know every single step. So um, I use these dance steps. I'm quite happy to pass on any of this information or share this PowerPoint in any way I can with people if they want to have it later as a teaching resource. But um, yeah, basically I found slowing down the steps and then talking through each one and saying, you know, on successive weeks of learning the dance, Okay, so who remembers how it starts? Good, good. Okay, who remembers the next two steps and gradually you accumulate and, and that knowledge builds up and then you can speed up the dance and you can do it as a performance and it's a really amazing thing to do. But, you know, to start with watching that performance, we were able to talk about things like, okay, kids, so did this group just show up to, um, did this group just show up to the um, Flinders Street Station and just plonk their drums there and just have that, just do the dance, just like, work it out on the spot of course they didn't we had they had to go there they had to time the light cycle they had to then talk to the musicians and go this is how long we need the music to go for they had to think about the steps that were going to go with all of the music you know we, we talked through all of that amazing um learning that went on with that activity okay so you should just in regard to sharing that if you can pass that powerpoint on to um Asme. Mm -hmm. we can, to the conference we can upload that to that same site so again they've got six months access to that sure do you have a um a dropbox because the links don't work um, ah in most, i'll find out i might I'll have to talk out. to you about that yeah, yeah. i'd be we'll happy to share later. happy to share so basically um i wanted to come back to why you sound infusion because you know the blended learning is great but if you have especially in lockdown, like we're still, I don't know about um, other states, but Victoria, we're still in lockdown for another two weeks of online learning when we've done a whole term pretty much. Um, it's a great resource to use Sound Infusion in these times. Um, so we compared um, GarageBand, Soundtrap, Foundation Band, Band Lab, and they all have free trials too. Um, and they can all be used as remote and blended learning tools. Um, and this all fits in with our conference theme of Music Nourish Life. Um, but with Sound Infusion, these are the things that make it stand out. Um, it has curriculum-based lesson plans. None of the other competitors in the market have that. Um, and I can say they're great lesson plans because I wrote half of them. Yeah, very modest. Um, that, no, they do work. They're trialed in classrooms. And there are other two other people who've been, you know, helping with writing those. And they're really great to use. They've been trialed. Made in Australia. None of the competitors are made in Australia. This is. Um, historical and geographical information on the instruments is there, obviously. And the sheer amount of um, different cultures and samples that are available there. And as you saw when you were sampling them, their quality. Um, so somehow we've managed to, despite all of uh, my glitches with my PowerPoint today, my apologies about that, get to the point where I'd love um, any questions or things. I'm quite happy to chat with people or, um, or have comments in the chat now if you want. I'm happy also for you to save my email address. And I work two days a week at Sound Infusion at this email address. Happy to talk any time about um, ideas around diversity and learning and you that should. kind of thing. Sorry to interrupt. Um, if you're finished with sharing, it might be good to unshare and that way you'll see people and they can put their hand up if they want a question. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. So please raise your hand if you have something um, that you can, um, that you'd like to contribute, discuss. We have, we've come up with five minutes if we need five minutes to discuss, which would be great if there's discussion. Love it. Anyone's got anything to say? Or if anyone at this point is pretty sure they've got an amazing sound infusion, something or other to share, and they've still got it open, we would love to hear from you as well. Anybody? Lana Kay, did you want to, I keep saying your name the wrong way. Did you want to have another Oh, that's break? okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I just have to find it again. It was on my, I've got so many screens open. I've got my Evernote making notes. <laughs> Oh, look, I don't want to stress you. We, doing, we do no, have no, five no, minutes, fine. though. So no, if you I'll, wanted to share. Let me Great. just get to it. Um, share screen. Google Chrome, I will share that. Just tell me if you can hear it. 
Here we go. I'll just stop there. What I really loved about it, there were some ambient sounds. So there was the background street dance sounds, which was great. So you could really sort of start with that as a as an interest and then go with the actual rhythmic things, you know, as well. So that was a bit out of time because when I was playing it, it didn't sound like that. But anyway, um, and yeah, that was it was wonderful. So I'm really excited about this resource. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, well, I'd like to thank Esme for for going ahead with this amazing conference um, the best way that we know how um, and it is more screen time but it's so worth it and it's just wonderful to be able to meet and talk with colleagues and share ideas um, and thank you so much for coming to my presentation today. Thank you Nisha it's, it's been really an eye-opener for me and hopefully for others as well so yes well done um, and just a reminder, yeah. you've got that link hopefully for some of you, but I've put it onto the website just underneath where the Zoom link was, if you need that again. Yeah. Okay, have a great day. Enjoy the next two days as well, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.